What if Rogan, Rogan, at the, when he was making the most money from Fear Factor, said he had to get high every day because he hated. He's like, I'm here watching people eat donkey balls. Right. And this, this is not what I want to do. So right. I think, I think what happens is, and, and what's interesting is like, you know, they asked Rogan if, uh, you know, would he ever interview Trump? And he was like, no, nah, I'm good. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Matt Lipton. Is we discuss uh, people who care about or create facades, surviving uh, the dumb society that America is creating. What Kanye, was Kanye pulling a scam and how to be miserable in relationships when you're not telling the truth? Um, mm. It's a goodie. We get into it a little bit here and there, but... Um, yeah, it's good a good, it's a really good one, and uh, we continue the show over at Patreon. If you love the show and you want to support us, sign up at patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus content and listener mail episodes. And, uh, for example, this week we continue our conversation with uh, comedian Matt Lipton, and we talk about the battle of integrity and what, what it means, the results of it. And then I tell a, a story about uh, me being brutally honest to somebody. And uh, sometimes it ain't pleasant, but it needs to be done. So join us over there, patreon.com slash manschool202 for uh, that. Also, Dante does consultations. You can go to dantenero.com and click on consult. And if you want to consult with me about relationship advice, sex advice, anything you need, life advice, email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com and we can set up rates for a consultation. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, Square Pimper Gay? GYB, we get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, we got a special guest on today. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Uh, <laughs> my good friend and uh, funny dude and... Uh, Funny, funny comment. Um, give it up for my boy, uh, Matt Lipton. What's going on, Matt? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me on. It's cool, cool. Harry, how you doing? You good? Man, I'm having a good time. I I'm I'm as excited, almost as excited as uh, Trump giving out free water, man. That's how much energy I have today. Trump water, of course. Trump <laughs> water, to... guys. Trump water. It's out there. You know, he had to give some, uh, he ran out, so he had to give some inferior water as well. <laughs> So, so long if you know that. What happens when you bring two cases of water and you act like you're a big shot? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Put a half a bottle, open an open liter, and yeah, just you know, poured just it in, in the mouth. Just in a warehouse for 13 years. It's no big deal. He, he, he did it like it was uh, spring break. He just poured it in, in the mouths of babes. Oh, that, well, that's how he knows how to do it, by the way. He, he just... also had a two-piece bikini. It was on the bar, so that's awesome. Um, what a fucking idiot. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's start the show on a positive good? note. On a positive, yeah, note. yeah, on a positive. Like, what a fucking idiot! I, I uh, you know, it's funny. I think, uh, I think he's he's really kind of winding down because it's like the same old song, and they're they're trying to hype DeSantis up, but DeSantis is boring. Like, you're gonna watch him destroy DeSantis and then lose the whole well election. DeSantis is a, a a fake crazy yeah he's not real crazy the thing about say what you will about Trump that guy is legit crazy he's legit crazy he's legit you know whatever it is he's 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 doing it guys are trying to like play Trump they're trying to act like him this guy nobody real would go I'm gonna go take these people water from the water of the people who don't have water because of me um oh, so man. yeah he he did and a couple big macs and act like he's the, doing all everybody the a favor that would have kept them safe then he was like oh this way i can you know you got to make a market where you want to anyway by the way do you need expired beans like beans that are about to expire here's a pallet of them yeah right? like just goya beans no one asked for that oh but, did he give beans yeah. too oh yeah pallets of like goya beans and apparently like they were about to expire uh, yeah. oh, things wow. that no one asked for things that like no one asked for and so like sort of, and then 13 sort of like year him. old bottle yeah 13 year old bottled water 
you know, yeah. that's always good because you got to bring, you have to put the brand of the thing that you're giving, even if it's, even if it's gone out of business. I want to see what Trump your logo bottle. is on the water bottle now. Now, I, I was just joking about, it. I didn't actually see this Trump water. I want to see what the logo looks like. Yeah. If there yeah, is yeah. a logo. Probably got the presidential uh, logo on it. No, it doesn't. It has like the Mar-a-Lago, whatever that little. Uh, it looks like, yeah. So this might have been before he was president because he would definitely. Yeah, Trump spring water. <laughs> it's, it's Trump. Yeah, it's like it's like Trump steaks, you know, except Trump water. He just pulled out old branding, threw it on a bottle of water because, yeah. you know, God forbid he the God best. forbid anyone else makes money except Donald Trump. You know, Poland Spring, fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah, you know what? Fuck them, too. Let's be honest. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not going to go on you know, that. That's the, that's, that water's not from Poland. Come on. We all know that. <laughs> or the spring. <laughs> yeah, or the spring. Yeah. It's from neither. So, you might have stuck a, spring, a rusty spring in it, but other than that. <laughs> so, Matt, not. last last time we spoke to you, you were still living the pandemic life you were still inside and, oh i'm uh, i'm healed i'm completely healed i'm, out, I'm outdoors <laughs> now i'm social like i've you know i cut my hair i'm shaving again nice you know, i'm just living a life yeah man yeah so yeah matt good. was real fucked up when it came i to was that. i felt and i felt fu- but thank you i felt like that kind of brought me out of my shell a little bit yeah what do you mean what brought you out the show oh coming on the show show it was oh, like really? it was like healing yeah i really oh, did feel that way i felt like i came out of my shell a little bit well you Man, last glad, time I'm glad we he was one you. of matt was one of the last guests we did in studio yeah right right right, right 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 he was one of the last ones who actually came in the studio and it was a big thing for matt yeah yeah and like it's sort of like this we're, we're taking all the fun out of an interview and we're taking the worst parts of like a job you know well, so it's like, you know it feels like it's a meeting i'm not gonna lie i feel like um the standard has changed so much that this is kind of like when you look at anybody's podcast, when you look at debates, you look at news, uh, CNN, everybody's just kind of doing yeah. it by remote, you know? I this mean, every so, once it's in so much easier. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's definitely a d- dynamic of it being in person and, you know, but, but I think that we've kind of gotten to the point where we, we can make it. I, I don't know if the, audience have accepted that and they're just used to it or we just got better at it yeah you know harry can you pause let me get something to drink real quick all right one second i'll pause go i like the background man i really like the background (laughs) like the chalkboard oh thanks man Uh, yeah man kind of matches with the theme i gotta send harry one Oh, the background with the chalkboard? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really like it. I really like the whole the whole logo with the chalkboard and everything. Um, That's cool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we could do some healing. You know, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how that worked. But I mean, I guess, you know, you know, I, I guess I didn't know what you were feeling at the time. I know I know you felt stressed. I know you talked about being stressed. Oh, but, you yeah, know, I mean, man. I, sometimes I don't know how talking to me would make that better. <laughs> it depends well, I mean, on the I situation. Think, yeah. It depends yeah. if they catch you in the right frame because you can you can lead. I mean, you give the same info, but you can choose the positive road or you can choose the uh, <laughs> break somebody down and build them back up road. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I, I just according I, I think uh, in, the words, in the words of the great uh, Barry Ribs. That guy's brutally honest, man. <laughs> brutally honest, bro. Do Seven I have times. patience? Yeah. Do I have patience for other people's bullshit today? If the answer is yes, you're great. Then you're great. But, you know, but which is most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, um, one thing I think the pandemic did, the pandemic, I, I, I did a lot of reading. I read a lot of books. Um, I listened to it was I, when I wasn't reading books, I was listening to them. I was doing audio audible and, and I got to the point where I was listening to books at two times the speed. 
because I wanted to get more in in my head. So I was, I just kept speeding it up, speeding it up till I, I literally was doing it at two times the speed. And it's weird. It's just an interesting thing. It's an interesting um lesson that you know you you're uh it, it's amazing what your what your brain will get used to, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think if I if I try to listen to all out of audible uh, if I, uh, audio books at regular speed now, now I'm like, ah, come on, come on, come on, you know. <laughs> Right. It's weird that, sounds, it, that sounds maddening, like listening to something at fast forward. Really? Like I, yeah. I I mean, I've done it with like footage where I've where I'm like, if I'm like keen through footage really fast, I'll listen and then stop. But like it at, after a while, it's like, no, 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 no. I need to hear things at like the normal speed. Right. So. Get you. Does it, does it make you anxious? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just slow down. But like <laughs> if I'm watching something, I want to fast forward through. I want to fast forward through it. Like I don't like I don't need this part of the story. I'm just gonna skip through it and get to I the don't next even part. watch YouTube videos. <laughs> I watch YouTube's videos at a at a minimum of a one and a half speeds. Yeah. Just yeah, I'm out of my mind. But really. So, well, you know what? I, I found this is interesting, is especially about getting information out there. Uh TikTok is great. And I'll tell you what what the thing about TikTok is. I think the longest video you can do for the most part, a majority of the people is like three minutes. They don't want anything more than that, right? So it's great because when you look something up on TikTok, the information, they give it to you right away as opposed to when you look something up on YouTube, like, hey, you know, how do I, uh, what's the best way to write a cover letter? And then the YouTube video is always, well, now, why would you want to write a cover letter? Well, here's the thing about a cover letter. <laughs> cover letter started in 1876 with that, 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 you're like, just get to the thing. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting what people choose to do with the time because you don't have to make the video uh, 25 minutes long. You know, you could give the same information in five minutes, but some people just don't know any better. Ten, and they, they end up doing is 10 minutes now. Is it 10 minutes now? Yeah, but that's, was... that's only for a couple people, like not a couple people, but I mean, you got to not everyone can get 10 minutes. You have to have a certain number of views before they let you do 10 minutes. TikTok is long form now. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Everything uh, is just I, becoming the same. That's wonderful. Let me see. Isn't what that wonderful says. how that works? <laughs> it, it is says, always it is always well, fucking strange that it, it goes from from, you know, uh, we're going to start out as a short thing. Like, you know, we only I think Insta, remember Instagram was only supposed to be eight seconds or 16 yeah, or seconds. Like Vine, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Vine, yeah. I think is, is like a what was it? A minute <laughs> was like the maximum of a, a Vine. Says, let me see, when TikTok began, videos apps were 15 seconds long. And the short turnaround was tailored to capture people's attention, perfect for quick consumption, and scroll through endless stream of videos. 2017, TikTok bumped up to 60 seconds. That began to increase the amount of time period since TikTok has been uploads and extended videos maximum length of three minutes in 2021. That three-minute mark seemed to hit the sweet spot as TikTok blew up and worldwide nearly half as many popular and amidst success. Uh, 2022, Tik expanded. TikTok expanded maximum length for 10 minutes and uh, left the, some questioning whether the social media app has forgotten its roots. So- yeah, they all end up changing. <laughs> they all end up changing and doing the same thing that the other thing did. It's very strange, but it happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, like, a, it's an interesting thing. I I had a com I had somebody ask me a question about uh you know, picking up girls on the internet using apps. And mm-hmm. one of the things is like this shortcut of because you know, the, you're texting and they text back and uh one of the things I think that guys don't understand is that when they're texting, right? I, I talk about the, the fact that there's a te- subtext to everything that you're doing. Like there's the, the there's the you that you present and then there's the you underneath that you really feel. And we're aware of the insecurities and, the, you know, the lack of skill or whatever, the lack of value or vac- lack of self-esteem. And we're trying to cover that up. Or we're trying to hide that 
as we speak on on a on a uh, you know as we as we're talking we're trying to perceive how the person is perceiving certain certain responses and certain social dynamics but no matter what happens it comes through the your ability to hide it is a weird thing because uh yes you can learn to hide it but even when you learn to hide it there's a there's always a tell there's a poker tell. It's funny. I was looking at a video we did some time ago with uh, Clayton Fletcher. Do you know Clayton, Matt? No, I don't think so. So Clayton Fletcher is a, a, a comic. has been around 20 years plus. Um, but he, he plays professional poker. Oh, that's cool. And so, he, so he'll book shows in Melbourne during the uh, Texas Hold'em World Series. So he'll do shows and he'll also, you know, he'll do shows and he'll also uh he'll play poker at the same time. Play poker and you know, so it's like both. And he'll book his shows around wherever, like he'll go to Vegas. And there's always this thing, there's this thing we call a poker tell, which uh it basically tells you, you know, tells the opponents whether you're bluffing or you're not bluffing. That's why a lot of them wear sunglasses, it's in their eyes. But no matter who it, who you are. When you're lying, there's a level of anxiety. Unless, of course, you're Carlos Mencia and you're a sociopath. You, you, like, you, <laughs> I mean, but you got to literally be a sociopath not to, because you've learned to mimic empathy as opposed yeah. to feel empathy. Mimic telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, also empathy as if you're, you're sorry. It's it's weird. Um, so I was watching, I, you know, I was watching, uh, Tiger Belly with Bobby Lee and they and they showed the video of him talking to uh Carlos Mencia. Talking to Ms. Mencia and Mencia says about you know they're confronting him about stealing jokes and he's literally been in comedy jail for maybe 15 years. And he goes through this. I, I you know, I would love to apologize, just tell me who. Anytime I question somebody, they he goes through this and then he says, you know, I was in a really dark place. And you know, I know some some real tough guys, and I I had to uh, I had to stop them from hurting the people, from hurting the people that I stole jokes for that were upset at me because I stole jokes, and uh, it took me every day to. <laughs> he, he wouldn't by like, chance be uh, lying again, would he? <laughs> no, I, I he it's, does, but it's I think that's that's really sounds like a deflection. Of uh, of some kind, I don't I don't believe you. I don't believe that there are bad yeah. people. That well, are, I mean, look, he's protect- famous. Yeah. yeah. Look, uh, Kanye was running around. Kanye is soft as butter, but he was walking around with straight killers from from Chicago. That I know, people in Chicago knew the thugs he was running around with. So he 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 definitely had goons, and I mean, it ain't you ain't gotta have a lot of money. Like I, I, you know, <laughs> I can, Mike, I get Matt, I can have you snuffed out on camera right now for five G's. It's not. I do. I would do it for less than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yourself? so you don't have, to have you'd a lot undercut of money. yourself for wholesale hey, prices. No one, no one hates me more than me. Come on, <laughs> I'm not going to let anyone profit off of my demise except me. I have family; they could use the money. It's fine. Yeah. So, so I believe he I believe he uh I believe he has some some probably has some goons around him that you know like his money and they're orderly oh yeah don't worry we'll handle it but the simple fact that his his response was the people that I stole jokes from I did you a favor by not having you killed having you killed yeah it's, it's, I it's, mean because wow. I'm such a such a bad man I'm such bad. a great guy I'm yeah, such a, you know. a great I'm my I'm such my character is so redeemable, but yeah. it's it's interesting. Uh, it's like Caligula. It's like Caligula being apologetic, you know. Yeah, yeah. He, I and mean, he's he, not Caligula. You always get guys <laughs> who are hanging around you, who are hanging around you, hanging around you, trying to, you know, trying to come up. Uh, they know you got money, so now you, you know. I mean, I, honestly, I believe there's a bunch of guys that are hanging around Chappelle now. You know, because, you know, getting the rub off the, you know, just 
I mean, it's I I imagine it's a good time riding in somebody's private jet, you know, um, you know, going to their farm or whatever the fuck it is. It is what it is. But it's a weird thing because the tell, but initially I was saying the tell is always there. The truth, the truth is always there. And it's just, it's, I, you know, just like we were up at stand up New York and I can, um, so I'm always sitting on the side and I, um, and I, I hear comics talking and it just like, I remember at a time when I was, unaware of them talking because I was doing my own talking. I, you know, I had my own insecurities and stuff. And so it was always a thing where I was like, you know, I wasn't really paying attention. And now, because I feel like so much of what I think, so much of what I thought matters doesn't matter. Now I, um, I, I, I hear everything. And the I need less and less information uh, in order to know what's going on inside. And it's really, so often it's really pitiful, like to me. Like I really feel sorry for people <laughs> because it just, you know, people are walking around afraid and, and scared and scared to produce and scared to take risks and, looking for the acceptance of other people. And so a lot of what the show does, the sh- well, or the, the intention of the show, is to get people to be the guy that they want to be, not just project the guy that they want to be. Because right. once that's tested, it all falls apart. You know? It all really falls apart. Well, like even with with you, I mean, you have you're dealing with a lot of younger comedians. What's one of the things that you encounter that you're seeing there, in, in the sense of like what these young guys are doing? You think it's just a lot of phony behavior? It's a lot of talk because I find that there's a lot of guys talking and giving out philosophizing, and, and just giving out wrong information. You you mean the guys who are who think yeah, but why are they doing that? That's uh, the two tr- because they it's part of trying to feel better, and more powerful about themselves. Right. So it's not really about helping people. It's not no. it's not really about giving them direction. They're not giving direction because they want somebody to be better. They're giving direction because they want somebody to go, hey, uh, you you're know, so wise. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm so, you're so wise. wise. Yeah. And, and then you're you're beholden to me because or you're subordinate to me. And it just um I don't really I, I really don't have a problem being subordinate when I know that's hard to believe, but I mean it's it's uh but to <laughs> well, somebody who I you don't have a problem be, if somebody has more knowledge than you, oh yeah, you're I'm uh, fine I'm, with, with sitting back and ab- 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 absorbing that knowledge, you don't yeah. feel like it's competition. You don't feel threatened. If somebody has more of a knowledge about something else, you're keen to do that. You're keen to listen. Like, all right, let me learn something from this person. Yeah. And there are people out there who who don't. People who get uh, offended or uh, they, intimidated. They intimidated. Yeah. Like knowledge is some sort of challenge. So well, some it, people want to be the smartest guy in the room, or they want to be the the most interesting person in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they're not actually that person. So they create an environment where they are. Yeah. Or they for or they just they're real most of the time they're just jacking off on people. You know, I mean it's really a situation where nobody asked. They're not really doing anything of any significance for any particular reason. But it's just about them jacking off on somebody and them feeling better about themselves. And I just, you know, I, 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 I think as I go ahead, as I recognize no, my yeah. more my mortality, I just don't. It's just, just seems like such a waste of time. I mean, I could read another book at three times the speed in the time it, you know, in the time that this is going on, just to be better, you know. So you, you know, but if you're working to be better, then you're not spending time faking. For fooling people that you are better, you know. I think there also comes a, a situation where people, um, 
it's a natural instinct to not want to be wrong or to not look foolish. And people get very self-conscious about that when it's okay to go, you know, I don't know enough about that. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Please tell me about it. But there's a, there's this human instinct that you think you're less than if you don't know the information, especially, I guess, as you become an adult, you kind of feel self-conscious about it. Maybe it's different when you're a kid, but when you're an adult and somebody your own age or even younger is explaining something to you that you don't know about, there is that aspect of you thinking you're less than and to some, yeah. to some extent. Yeah, I mean, I also don't feel like uh, so. I, so I was I do serious radio on Fridays, and it's a predominantly upwardly mobile black audience, right? And uh, they were talking about crystals, you know, people that work with crystals and Reiki and all kinds of shit, and okay, and. So uh, like you New huh? age crystals, like new age healing crystals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. like okay. referring to it, you know, all kinds of that shit. <laughs> yeah, all that bullshit. And so, this this weekend, I didn't even tell you, Harry. This weekend, it was like I got I got called out because oh, really, well, I don't know, whom? not not called out, but I was Challenged? asked. Someone stepped up. What 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 my religious affiliation was it's the first Where was time. this can you explain this to me in what capacity did this happen like what am i do i believe in god am i Chris catholic am i christian I, I, what what am i right yeah, I, I wish i was there for this so i said i basically said i'm atheist with an agnostic glazing you know um mm -hmm. i would love for there to be a god that looks over me and cares about me and wants me to succeed that I can rely on, um, who also incidentally really gives a fuck uh, after he's made universes and galaxies that he also really gives a fuck about where I put my dick. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like I would, I would love, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I'm being sarcastic, but I mean, this well, is I, how would, I, listen, believe it's I, I would love for there to be a heaven and I'd love for there to know that there's a place we go to after we die so that when we die, we don't just turn into dust. That would be really nice. Mm. But that don't make it fucking so. Well, you know, I I as you know, we've talked about this several times. I, I've always I was a big Maury Povich fan. Like Harry's always talked about how my television is. Yeah, I'd call it's, Dante up. I go, what do you watch? Either exquisite or trash. You know? like, I'm watching this documentary about the mechanics in World War II. Or he, he's like, it's paternity week on the Maury Povich show, so it's a big stuff. So I, I go. Well, I mean, really... that's the best. That's the best TV programming. A little bit of something of high class, and then tr utter trash. You have to have both. Well, I I've been watching. I've been watching on uh, BET to have a show called the uh, all the all the Queen's Men, which is basically about a, a black strip club in Atlanta, a male strip club, and she runs these male strippers. And I, I we, we, we call it uh, uh, big dicks and bad acting, right? <laughs> 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 but it's just, it's just the acting is horrible. There's, you know, there's what there's is this? Twelve a murders. You know, there's 12 murders in a day. Nobody's nobody's investigating. It's just bodies popping up, people disappearing, clearly connected to this this woman. And, and the woman who run, the woman, the, the lead in it is Eva from uh, Next Top Model. She won originally when one of the next top. She was one of the early Next Top Model chicks. And she's acting with Tyler Perry. It's just so bad, but it's my guilty pleasure. But... I do know that this is fake. <laughs> I personally believe the downfall of America was in Maury Povich, Jerry Springer, these shows where people couldn't discern fakeness from reality. Right. Um, and I, I hate, now that I think of it, Harry, I kind of wrestling too. Kind of. Well, look, wrestling has not been. Initially. Initially, but remember when when people thought it was real, it was there was very limited nonsense to it.
if you remember yeah. the 50s it was just guys wrestling around in headlocks for a lot and then it got a little wild in the 70s but people people were aware of it you just didn't talk about it you know when did when do you think people knew it was sports entertainment i think around the 70s they they were aware of it no yeah 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 there I are some people who still thought arguments it was with dudes in college there were people. How, I'm not saying there weren't. You're saying when did everybody know that it was? Yeah, when I mean, was it an established fact that these well, are characters? Well, the, the, the established, the the official one was when I think in 1989, Vince McMahon came out and said it in a in a uh, I forget in a, a, a press conference or a statement. This way, he didn't have to deal with the athletic commissions anymore, which makes sense because actually, I mean, it's still a sport technically, but. It, it didn't have that. You didn't want to have to deal with the same type of standards and rules as like a boxing match. And right, stuff. Right, right. So he announced it in 89. But I mean, people knew that it was, I, you know, it was people. Always, Iron I mean, Sheik I was, got caught with uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. They got into a car accident. And yeah, that it was, was that was Hacksaw, like the end Hacksaw, of Jim Duggan. Oh, it was Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Okay. Yeah, they got caught smoking. Uh, I mean, they got arrested with drugs and whatnot. And they were supposed to be uh, opponents and stuff. I mean, that happened. Right. But people, people long before that were aware. Not everybody, I guess. I, and yeah, but. I think I there think were it, people that argued it, but I don't think believe people were. It was a even after Vince McMahon said it, I would say later it much. I, you, I'm going to tell you what really I think really did it because if What's you that? think about it, Hulk Hogan was one of the biggest dudes in in the game, right? Um, but when Hulk. Uh, did movies? He did movies as the Hulk, like he as Hulk Hogan. Yeah, he didn't do it as an actor. You know, like as like Terry Balea. This is who yeah. I am, brother. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> oh, maybe no, that's camera, all he. This could, is who I am, brother. That's the only role he knew how to play. <laughs> he, yeah. Who art thou, old fellow? Yeah, brother. <laughs> you well, let me tell you milk. something, Hamlet. <laughs> So the rock, I, I think dude. what really exposed it was uh was the rock. As late as the rock, you know, or no, when the rock man. started doing I, mean, I I loved I loved wrestling when I was 10 and I believed that it was that what I was seeing was real, right? And I kind of think it's the same type of people that thought wrestling was real all along and believed it are the are the same, the same type people, of people that ran up into the Capitol. Yeah, or the same people that thought let's, that the liver let's... king was real. You know what I'm saying? That the liver the liver king had genuine muscle, <laughs> right? Because I don't think anyone in their right mind looked at the liver king and was like, you know what? Eating liver, he <laughs> that guy got that naturally, yeah. right? But enough people believed him so that it was a brand, you know? And then when he came out, he was like, yeah, well, you know, I lied. He didn't even talk that way. He was talking like Hulk Hogan. So he took a page from, you know, wrestling. I really didn't no. follow him much, but I know he lied. And uh, man, you there I wasn't much at... to follow. He was a guy on Instagram who would eat uh, livers or whatever. Just a lot of like and he was like, I'm not on steroids. I'm not on steroids. I mean, it wasn't uh, like, even I'm, like yeah. he alluded to not being on steroids or he tiptoed around. This is like, natural, bro. Yeah. This is all natural. And I talk like this in real life. And if you want to be like me, if you want to do anything, you have to eat testicles. You know, it was just it's it such was a over weird, the top. You know what? When you look back on it, what was the end game? <laughs> like, uh, to sell yeah. supplements. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what it was. It. Okay, fair enough. Selling supplements. Why yeah. else do you go? Uh, listen, I'm going to get everyone on board with eating these testicles. Yeah. Like if you because he wasn't it's... selling testicles. I guess he was selling like the ground supplements or something. I I think it, it was like a liver pill or something like he had a whole company and and he was the face of it and he would go I, and it was just promoting a I, brand. And... I love that he wanted to go on Rogan and Rogan said, nah, I'm good. Yeah, Thanks. there's yeah. nothing. There's nothing to talk about. You said you, you, you didn't use steroids and you use steroids. The end yeah. of story. The end I knew story. nothing. I knew How do nothing we fill about two hours. We gonna fill two and a half hours up with that question. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. But he shot his shot, but that's the level of like uh, insincerity we have that this dude gets outed, and instead, and that's the there is something about this new generation. There is no shame, like shame is just another level or opportunity to keep going, or you know, just or you just yeah. you just bypass it. I mean, well, the liver. But I King, think that has a lot to do with that has a lot to do with Jerry Springer, Maury Povich, the Jersey Shore, just this this embracing of. 
stupidity and the dumbing down of the country and the okay let me ask you this though dante is is the country dumber because of the stuff we type this type of programming and this type of entertainment or does this entertainment and this type of programming exist because people are dumb and then they enjoy it both Mm. i i think both is true i mean you know there's a first of all there's a level of deception that exists because people want to be something that they're not. And there is, there's these huge ways in which people are willing, what people are willing to do to get that. So I think that exists. Um, the other thing is the clout comes from stupid people. I mean, people, pe- I mean, as well as smart people too, but I mean, I, I put stupid people in the fact that, they idolize human beings as if not looking at them as if they're real entities. Well, you know? there's never been a better time to be stupid than right now. Let's be honest. Yeah. There was a time <laughs> where being stupid was like a death sentence. Now there's, there's no stopping you. It's, it's, uh, you got opportunities when you're stupid and crazy. It's great. Like it's, it's a great, you could make a great living being crazy and stupid you I also be a think senator, that has a lot that a has a lot to do with um with, with with Kanye. I think Kanye Kanye well, I should give the credit where the credit's due. Trump really broke the broke the machine. Like whatever level of decency that a human be, being should have, no matter what he did, his parties. Raping girls in allegedly raping girls in uh thank you. Oh thank you. Lord and Taylor uh molestation. Allegedly. Well, I mean, we know we he was he himself said, I mean, I don't even know if that would be uh you'd have to say allegedly, because he did say I grab him by the pistol. I kissed him, I can't stop kissing him. I I mean he admitted to this. Mm. We know he slept, he admitted to slipping sleeping with a hooker while he was married. We know he was cheating on his first wife. With, but this this level of immorally immoral, so he did so much that I think he broke the system, so that anybody that's asking for just remote uh, consideration, they're like, nah, uh, I'm I'm gonna double down. You got this guy, George Santos, is walking around in a red dress with uh, with smoky eyes, and the the GOP is going after LGBT. Like it's going out of style. Meantime, they're blowing dudes at the truck stop. So there's a. I'm I'm still convinced that George Santos is like artificial intelligence that they've that has just come to life, right? Like they programmed him to be as electable as possible, and it was just like an AI spit out this personality, and he was like, "I'm just gonna read from this script," you know? Because it's it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The things that he said is just so unbelievable. They're yeah. beyond the pale. Yeah. You know, my mother died in 9 11 and the Hall. You, you know what I mean? Whatever yeah. he said. Uh, yeah, but you I know. mean, you break the, you break the mole. And then once it's broken, I mean, when were, when did people talk about Jews in the way that Kanye talked about Jews until Kanye? And now he's laughing and he was like, this, that's how I got out of the contract. You know, this is how you, so it's, it's, there's an element of this where there's no level of integrity, no level of authenticity and no empathy. So you have people literally lying on every level, on every aspect of every level. And you're like, well, I guess if you wanted to get out of a contract, I guess Uh that's, that's what, I said, if I guess if he wanted to get out of a contract, that's one way of doing it. Well, I mean, you know, clearly that's, that's what he's that's what he's saying. He, why he did the things that he did and he said the things that he did. Uh, yeah, tri- it would. Be I don't triggering. buy that, but oh, I know. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's you know uh, the one story. One the, like I was listening to. I guess when I forget which. Uh, I guess it was Tim Pool. No, it was after. It was. It was Alex Jones. When he was on Alex Jones, he said, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." Um, when he, he made talking, Alex Jones feel uncomfortable. Oh, I mean, it was it was in terms of like in terms of like television, uh, yeah. or, or like reality TV. I thought it was I thought it was like uh, a great moment because it seems produced. It's either this is either a brilliant piece of production or it's just insanity. 
Uh, and he was talking. What do you about think it Darren, was? What do you think it was? I think it was. I think the guy is just out of his mind. You don't think, think you don't think it was a grift to a certain extent. No, no. no. I think if you, no. I think if uh, at some point, uh, it just it's it just there's, becomes untenable. There's no success in the grift, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like there's, there's fact, nothing that he grifted. He lost a, a, a shitload of yeah. money. The I fact mean, that was, Adidas I think he is did grift. I, I think he what got, is the grift he, though? Where's the he, money? You know, where where did, where did he benefit from it? He got his freedom. I think freedom. the interesting thing is that freedom that he to do what? whatever he wanted to do. To do what? What was he not doing? I don't understand. Talking about Jews? I don't. What is the freedom? No, no. He he could. He had no creative control over what he was doing in the in, in, in with, the shoe with, game. In the shoe game. In the design. Currently, game. he has no control of any of it because there's no shoe. There's no more shoe deal. So uh, whatever yeah, the mean, grift they, was, but he hurt them he, too. They regardless of whether he hurt them, he could have cut his nose off to spite his own face. That yeah, doesn't but he, mean he cut his nose, yeah. nose off. He didn't have, he kept, but he didn't he have create. He didn't have creative control to begin with. He had he had people that he hired, and so the 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 soundbite that I, I wanted to tell you about was he's talking about how Jared Kushner's uh, Jared Kushner had uh, you know a couple percentage points or ten percent and and. Uh, Kim Kardashian's company and he yeah. was that he took umbrage with that because and he said you know I brought my creative director on like and I gave them I gave them talented people and I only got five percent and then he kind of I guess exploded well uh, I mean, during this let's, dinner let's meeting. be honest uh, that's crazy that's that's crazy. Let's, let's look at it from a more righteous way Colin Kaepernick takes a knee uh, stands, you know, takes a knee for for what you know for police against police brutality. Um, he didn't make, he didn't make, uh, you know, like he didn't make anything of it, but he helped break the system too, because it okay. the system is exposed for the fact that he took a knee. You're trying to say that that this racism doesn't exist, and then it, and then you're 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 letting other people who who are much worse than him not get a job. I mean, uh, you, I, I definitely think there's that he broke cancel culture. Now, no, was it was it at the risk of one point five million dollars? Yeah, but um, let's be honest. Who who needs? Five, I mean, at, at what point in time is money too much money? If you're making two billion dollars. Like, I mean, how much more do you need? I, I don't know what else you would need if you're making two point billion. And I don't think that if you lost one point five billion, I don't think that you're really hurting. So, I mean, we all look at the at end of the day, I, I would like to be able to go outside and to, like, say hello to people and not have people be angry with me. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's you. I mean that's sure. That's I, a, I think that's I think that's a lot of people. But that's a goal of yours anyway. I mean, there's I people. Mean, yeah. There's people who spend their life trying to be infamous. You know, there's people who love the fuck the controversy. That you know. Sure, like you know Jeffrey Dahmer or like 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 Kanye West. Like there's yeah. no way that he said the things that he said and he wasn't aware that there was going to be a backlash. He knew there's no black person on this earth that says the things that he says and thinks that he's going to get away with it. Well, I think, I think if, you know, to Ari's point about the grift, I think it's, that's a textbook example of, of someone that's trying to maintain the grift out of sheer desperation. And Alex Jones was like, it, it, you you watched Alex Jones backpedal and was like, no, 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 no. Let me tell you a story right. about, you know, a German guy that like, you know, my grandfather. It's not all people. And, it's not all people. You know, yeah. let me let me tell you this story. And then, Con, you know, he's like, do you see what I'm saying with that story? And Kanye was like, no, so you're it's not saying, about you're me. saying it's, it's not a grift. On. It's not a grift because Alex Jones is the grift. Yeah, I don't I don't see what the point of, you know, if, if he wanted to get well, out of this multiple Adidas people. deal. Multiple people yeah, could be doing grifts, you know, just yeah. because it benefits one party to, or what's the objective? I mean, I mean, for Alex I mean, Jones or for Kanye? Well, this is what I'm saying. Either one. What I'm saying, I'm not saying I mean, I definitely think there's I think he's there's, crazy. I don't think there was an objective. Yeah, but so is Alex Jones. But he backpedaled when Alex when, Jones, I think, is playing a character more so. You don't think he's money. crazy? 
you don't think I think crazy. he's slightly I think he's off a little bit, but I don't think he believes everything he does. We've seen it in court when he was in court and getting sued by his wife. The argument that his lawyers made was he's doing a character. He's playing this up. And even if that's just a lie to get in, in court at the end of the day, you know, there's a certain level of mental illness for you to take some. No doubt. No doubt. So, at least a level of sociopathy to take little uh, uh, preschool kids have them murdered and you're chasing these pe parents around and you know lost these kids. Did you see, did you guys see the documentary This Place Rules? It was no. on HBO. No. no, what is that? You know what? It was, it's a great documentary. Um, the, uh, it's about like the January 6th and it focuses a lot on Alex Jones. And mm -hmm. I think that's probably the best example of where you see um, mm -hmm. Alex Jones kind of behind the scenes where you know, and he he will outright say, you know, I don't necessarily, you know, believe this or, but I'm saying it because it gets eyeballs on it and there's a greater good. And in that documentary, he calls himself classically liberal, which I think is, I think that's really funny that Alex Jones thinks of himself as being classically liberal. But I yeah. think that's part of the yeah. work. You know, that's part of the grift is to to antagonize people pro wrestling wise. Um, what is the difference, I guess, between the two? I guess he that, you know, and listen, is Alex Jones crazy to a degree? Yeah, for, no doubt. I think he's an asshole. I think he is he's out of his mind. I think he gets lost in whatever the fuck. But it's going to cost him a shitload of money for sure. It did, it did, it did cost go. him a shitload of money. I think that I think the grift went wrong. For sure. I, now, I, is it possible that Kanye's grift went wrong? Maybe. But, you know, at a certain point, you go some of these things. I don't know where the upside has been by. I don't a know lot where the upside things. has been for, for 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 Alex Jones. Well, his whole fan base was his whole fan base is insanity. His whole fan base is conspiracy theories, uh, theorists. So it does make sense that he would continue. Right, but it ultimately cost theories. him. Sure. Sure, it cost him major portion. In fact, it, I would say it cost him percentage wise cost him more than it cost Kanye with uh, percentage wise of his. Yeah, probably. Maybe. Yeah, it, it probably did without without a doubt. But just because one both of those things could be true, they could both be crazy. It doesn't mean one isn't or and there's very yeah, but this is exactly what I'm saying. I don't think it. I don't think Alex Jones is a grift and I don't think Kanye is a grift. I, think I absolutely that. think Alex Jones is a grift. Yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's it, that's I think between he, the supplements I think part of, of it, I think pills he's and cheating people. But I think you know. he I think he's out of his mind as well to a degree. Yeah, without a doubt. I think I think there's an aspect of it that you want to make your living that way. Sure. You have no soul. You have no conscience. Maybe you get caught up in the greed with without a doubt. But there's moments where you go where you see the 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 facade in it, like when he testifies in those court trials. Uh, the divorce trial and he has to say that it's an act and this is like, you know, I do a character and this, that, and you kind of see that. I haven't seen that with Kanye. Yeah. But he also went back on his show and did had graphics with the, with a bullseye on the judge's head. Yeah. I'm not saying he's not, not crazy without, without a doubt. I'm not saying he's not crazy. They're both well, crazy. I'm just saying, I'm not gonna, I don't want to, I, I, I can't, there's no way we can measure who's more crazy what we can measure is is one went way more taboo than the other something that i never done and i'm going to tell you because of that which one went more taboo than the other um just kanye kanye went more I, kanye I, went after after jewish people as a whole and said things that a that people know are not true but he literally, but prior to that, you couldn't say anything about Jewish people. Like people were afraid. He went, he went to the point where it's broken. It, it's broken. You, you can't, you, once you cross that line, it's just like with Trump. Once Trump is president, you can't talk to me about who can be president and who doesn't have the credentials anymore. That's broke. That's done. It's a done deal to have a pedigree. In the, in the in the White House again is I, I'm not saying that people won't don't want to have a pedigree. I'm just saying if somebody who is unqualified and is popular enough wants to run for president, they can run. There's for nobody president. with who's unqualified enough to be president anymore. 
Right. Anyone can literally be president. Before right. you, you, people would debate the qualifications, and that that is gone. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it's so it's broken. Okay. It's broken. I, yeah. There was a time when the things that you could say, you couldn't say the things that Kanye said on live on TV at all because you would lose everything. And then he did. I mean, he lost one point five million, but he had five hundred million in the bank. He he's still worth five hundred million. So I mean, Alex Jones is being sued for hundreds like, of millions. Hundreds of like just like impossible sums of money right i mean uh, not more than kanye i guess i mean in terms of what he lost or whatever like right, well, I kanye mean, lost 1.5 billion okay i mean what you mean like of potential earnings from an adidas still deal is that what no, you mean the deal was a two million two billion dollar deal yeah it was like 150 million a year that the, the yeah adidas was projecting that the, that's what they would lose right from the, from the deal itself so he he lost 1.5 billion he he retained 0.5 billion alex jones has lost i think upwards of about 150 million now and he plans to, you know slated them i guess let let me go my point was this here's what my point was um Jerry Springer is scripted. Maury Provich is scripted. Oh, Honey yeah. Boo Boo, Jersey Shore. Uh, uh, it's uh, the but it's it's like the wrestling effect. Like we trick ourselves into thinking that this is real, right? And some we, people think but it's we real. was a reality TV and stuff that we were doing was was X is the. I mean that this is the thing that dumbed down America. Well, I mean, and, there used to be carnivals, you know what I'm saying? Like there used to be carnivals and freak shows and it was, uh, a lot of it was a grift. A lot of it was an act. Yes, fake, but we're talking, know? there was a certain level of integrity that we had on television. You know, even if, I mean, we're literally finding out, I don't, I don't know if you heard this, Harry, that day, they're, uh, Black Lives Matter is suing FBI because they infiltrate, they um COINTEL Pro implanted uh FBI agents tried to hand out guns to get them to create violence. They they have evidence of this now and this my my point is it's broken. It's all broken. This the dishonesty runs amok. Somebody being dishonest, someone saying one thing and then not being a total hypocrite about it in the next voice, in the next in the next statement where we have video of you saying doesn't even matter. People so how just, does that tie how does that tie in to what how we help our listeners? Like because, what does that do for for being a better man? The commodity of truth is going through the roof. That nobody is honest. Nobody is truthful. Nobody is telling the truth. Nobody has any credibility. So as this becomes less and less, that that when as people let you know more of a stop espousing to be honest and credible, honest people, supply and demand become the 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 you know we become a the rarity diamond. and more valuable. Yeah, we become a, more valuable. Whole diamond. Yeah. It's not your six pack and it's not your cum gutters. It's it's <laughs> does this guy tell the truth? Yeah. Does he have any credibility at all? Does he say what he mean, mean what he say? Is he honest? Let me ask you something, Dante, because I, I agree with that aspect of it, because when you tell the truth and when you're you're somebody who, you know, is is not disingenuous, uh, a real genuine person, it, it does increase the value. But when you look at society is there a situation where you go, I'm God, I'm, I'm the odd man out, you know, why not succumb to just being a, a shit bag like everybody else? Um, because you're going to be unhappy like everybody else. Mm. I mean, everybody who, I mean, we talk about this all the time, everybody, every famous comic, everybody we know that is dishonest with themselves. They, they make money and they're miserable. 
I will say that Tucker Carlson does seem to be very happy. He does seem to be that. like a very happy man. I don't believe that. <laughs> I mean, he's a cackling idiot, but yeah, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe. I don't believe that. that he, uh, the notion first that of all, make... he's not. Sorry, go but, for it. Uh, no, I would say that the idea of getting on that show every night and complaining about something without humor cannot be a great job. I, I can't imagine. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, I go back and forth. He is an actor. Essentially, what he's doing is playing a role. Right. See, that's where I go. They don't give a shit about this part. But it, yeah, but you see the, the, the text messages. Him. Yeah, I mean, he and- he was complaining how there was a, a, a Fox News anchor that was fact checking things. And he was like, "Fire this woman immediately! Yeah. What is she doing? Yeah, but what like, did get he rid say, of this person." What did he say amongst the grifters when they he he when he you know all the text messages oh, about like about with like Laura how, Ingraham uh, and and yeah that Sean Hannity that Trump is saying is people is are going to get hurt. Yeah, people that are going to hurt. Ludicrous this is ridiculous. And, yeah. She's mm-hmm. a nut job. Yeah. So how is that happiness? Like you've caused this. You're giving you you. Well, well, that level think... of, of stress has got to be rough. I mean, the notion, you know, because it is a scam and you don't want to be found out, you know, because there I... is no text message of like when you're honest and constantly honest. Yeah. You can't go uh, fire that guy who's being too honest. Fire that well, guy I who's think... being more honest. Honest people are miserable. People that aren't honest, I think, are the happiest people in the world. I don't, they don't know. Have to, no. They don't have to live with anything. That's not true at all. That's fine. I'll fight you all day for it. <laughs> not, well, I don't. How how do you yeah. figure honest, dishonest people are happy? What, what, what do they have to be honest about? You know what I mean? Because they, they, every can lie, day, they can lie to themselves. They don't, no, they, they don't give a fuck. You can't. Unless, it catches up with you in some capacity. You're so you're talking about somebody who's sociopathic. Right. But if even they're not happy. Like, you even know, like Laura, Laura Ingram or like, you know, Tucker Carlson. Like you, just anyone on Fox News. You know what I mean? I, I, I think it would think be they, nice. You think they're happy? I think it's I think it's a, a pleasant notion for me to think that they're secretly miserable. But yeah, what do they have to be what do they have to be unhappy? Everything. With? Everything. I, 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 ag- I agree with you. If I was them, I would feel like shit, but then I I, I don't do what they do. Well, I, I, but- I couldn't do that. Like there's just something, there's a piece of me of my humanity that I have that doesn't allow me to unless you're a sociopath. Huh? Let's let's put it like this. Unless you are mentally ill, you are a sociopath, unable to experience empathy, right? Right. Uh, if, if you don't like dogs, say you don't, you, you like dogs, you don't like cats. Um, I'm, I kick a cat. Maybe it gives you a little bit of joy. Maybe right. you get a little bit of a hard on or whatever, you know. Whatever. I don't know, man. I don't want to judge you. However, you manifest hey, hey, joy. Where- we're going right to it. Okay, that's great. Right? However, however, I you kick him, express. I kick him again. Yeah. And you, oh. How many times am I going to kick this animal that you don't like before you go, all right, enough? Uh, enough. I, I mean, I wouldn't do it because for a lot of reasons, I'm not cruel. You know what I mean? It's like, but, but this, some people but the, are. But the only way that you're cruel is you have to be sociopathic. Well, and you I, can, I, I, I yeah, refuse I mean, to you, believe that everybody, all of these people are so, sociopathic. I think that they grift. The simple fact that we're talking about the word grift is that you're aware of the truth. You're aware of what's right, but you're doing this for a monetary objective. Okay. Right. Yes. I think that's what Alex Jones is. Right. I don't think that's what Kanye is. I don't think he did it for monetary objectives. I think he, he doesn't know there's something off in his brain. The I, thing, I the, mean, I would say got, there's something off about both of them. Yeah. But but, but I, I, one doesn't I'm not willing... one. I think there's a there's a medical definition where one knows what's right and wrong and does it anyway. And then the other doesn't necessarily know right or wrong. I don't think I Kanye think understands yeah, right or there wrong. There are times when 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 Alex Jones doesn't know right or wrong. There are times, sure, yeah, and again, it's all, uh, it's not one or the I other. I mean, I don't, you know, it's I don't care like, to split hairs about yeah, Kanye yeah. and Alex Jones. I mean, they're, they're both nuts. They're both nuts. I get it. And to say, I don't want to debate about which one is worse. My my point is that if you're not a sociopath, um, 
Uh, and let's be honest, who did Kanye hurt? Uh, I guess Jewish community would say that the, they've been hurt by it. Yeah, they didn't hurt. It, what Kanye said did absolutely nothing to hurt them. It was words. You um, could argue no that more, with any words, though, Dante. No you could more, argue that with any words said about anybody or any race. No more than 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 people saying racist shit about black people hurts people directly. I, it's I it's insensitive, but it doesn't hurt them in any physical way or whatever. And I mean, it it does. It's I, if I it's think promoting it violence, yeah, it, if it's I promoting it violence, people. it can, yeah. And promoting anti, but, but I feel the same way about any group that's you know is listen. I'm I, I live and die by words. I make my living with words. To me, I don't you know I don't give a shit. I don't think the words necessarily have a direct impact, but it does influence things. Which is why we give a shit about certain words and certain things you can't say in certain environments. Yeah, well, that's know? that's a way of because we're trying to change it. But there, yeah, but, but we're trying. There to are systems. No. There are systems in place. It, it, there are systems in place that discriminate and and that hurt people without a doubt yeah when you when you're talking about you're talking about n word and this and that and the other there are there are there are there are this is codified by law there are no people when you talk about anti-semitism it's not codified by law there it, it's there 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 Anti-Semitism is not codified by law in any shape or form. And you can make a face if you want. You're not equipped to, to say this because historically oh, I'm just, we're still I'm talking about, about this. The, the aspect of it. I'm not making it's a not, face. It's, it's, there's just no argument for that. You're not, you don't think there there are situations where people, even to this day, are having lawsuits because they're not allowed. And so I guess legally you're not – legally on, on paper – see, here's the thing. Like any situation on paper, everything is written down, quote unquote, properly. Right. But it's not. It's not proper. The things aren't proper. It's not being handled. And I think that's true for the black community. I think there's some of that within the, the Jewish community as well. I'm not, I'm saying I don't it's think it's not, on the same level. It's not. It's not. It's not. When you talk about when you talk about um, you talk about slavery to Jim Crow, Jim Crow to mass incarceration you give somebody a felony, you give somebody a felony, you you basically can make them a slave. The minute they have, you can discriminate the on you can discriminate against them legally because they're a felony. So you don't say all blacks are felons, you just you just police those communities at 20 times the, the rate of any other community. You don't give education. You don't do this. You don't, I, I mean, we, we're literally talking about like, you know, I'm trying to sell a house. My house is worth $2.1 million. The fucking, the, the white lady came in and appraised my house at 800,000. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That's yeah, that's fine. I mean, but this is, that's, but this is, this is yeah, codified yeah. in the culture of the system. So this, 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 there's no anti-Semitism that is codified by law. That's either either directly or indirectly. It's just not. That's just uh, not. I mean, you know, there well, were wait, social clubs in New York City that yeah, used to be you restricted directly, where, you indirectly, allowed, yeah. where Jews weren't allowed to be that, in the country clubs. That is no longer codified by law. And uh, it's not codified in culture. It's not even culturally codified. Now, maybe if you go to if you go to Russia... If you go to Russia, if you go to 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 other countries, maybe you could say that. But in the United States, absolutely not. There's no laws that specifically infect uh, black folks uh, that in specifically affect Jews that they are, uh, are incarcerated at a different rate. In fact, there are laws that don't affect them in that way. I mean, if you talk about the crack epidemic, you're talking about you you give you you um crack cocaine was prosecuted at ten times the rate of powder cocaine because they yeah, knew. yeah. now did 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 right the Iran the, the what was it the Iran did poor whites scandal? did poor whites get caught up in that absolutely poor whites get always get caught up in the same shit that black folks get caught up in. So, but my point is, I think my point is, we, uh, is truth is so rare that it literally becomes a commodity. And when we talk about the show and how the show 
produces what what we're saying is tell the truth, be credible and have empathy, which has always been, you know, you always hear nice guys finish last. And I'm saying that that is changing. That's changing because the system is broken. Matt, plug whatever you want to plug. We're going to do the rest of this behind me. We'll dig in a little bit deeper on this behind the scenes on the Patreon. Sure, I mean, you just want to follow me on Twitter. It's Matt Lipton Comic at Twitter. Mm. That's it. Harry. Uh, you could uh, follow me at Harry Trajani, and that's where all my social media stuff is. And uh, also follow us on Patreon, patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, y'all can check, you know, Google me. Uh, everything, the, <laughs> the comedian. Uh, don't forget the Patreon consultations. DanteNero.com. Click on the GYBB. Get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all, man. Check us on the Patreon side. Um, we dig in a little deeper there.